Hey guys, it's going to be and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to invite you to subscribe to the channel because it's really going to help me in improving and growing this community. The announcement today is that I'm going to be doing HDRP videos, the high definition rendering pipeline from Unity. We're going to be looking at how we can use the templates that Unity provides, also how we can apply post-processing and some different effects that are available through the HDRP pipeline. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so this is a scene that I created in Unity and I used the HDRP template that Unity provides. So you can go and do this in two different ways. You could use the template that they provide or you can also do this by yourself by going into Window, Package Manager, and basically downloading the high definition rendering pipeline and associating the a new asset that you create for the rendering pipeline. So I have another video where I go through that process. I'll put that in the description of this video. On this video, I want to focus on basically importing a new model and then setting some of the post-processing effects that are available for HDRP. So let's focus on that. So this is a scene that Unity provides by default. So the only thing that I'm gonna be using here is the ground. I'm going to be deleting everything else because I wanna show you how that works. So I'm going to unpack this prefab and the only one that I really need is the ground because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be putting a car right above the ground. And let's see, we don't need that either. I'm also gonna be removing the props. We can we can leave everything else. We don't need the reflect reflection props. And we're gonna be basically deleting all of that. And also let's delete the light. I don't believe the main camera has many settings. Nope, it doesn't have many settings for HDRP. So right now we're starting, you know, from scratch. There's really nothing good looking. And we'll make it we'll make it look good. So the thing that I want to do is I want to download an asset, which is this car. And I want to say that I'm downloading this asset from poly.google.com and I want to give credits to Nick Slaug because he was the one who created it, so he deserves the credit. So if you want to download this asset, I'm also going to be putting that in the description of this video. So I already downloaded it, so I'm going to just add it to the project. So I'm going to go ahead and go into models and that's basically the model that I downloaded. I can do that again so that you know what I did. Let me go into downloads and I just drag and drop the model FPX that I downloaded. I actually believe they put it in a zip file and you you will export, extract the contents of a zip file and then that will give you an FPX. Okay, so now that we have the car, what I'm going to do is drag it to the, to the hierarchy and we could, now thinking about it, we might not need the ground because the car already provides the ground so we can, we can delete the ensemble assets completely. And that's basically the car. And it doesn't look that great just yet because we're gonna have to do some other things. The other thing that I want you to do as well is we're gonna be extracting the materials. So I also want to create a new folder under assets and we're gonna call these materials. Perfect, let's go back into the car and let's make sure that we are downloading. Let me go back to the so you need to do that on the model itself, not, not on the prefab. So once you go to the model, you'll see these import settings. Then in the materials option, so you have multiple tabs here, there's an extract materials. Let's click on that. And we're gonna go back into assets and select the materials folder. And then hit choose. And what's gonna happen is Unity is going to basically look at all the materials that are associated with every one of these components and then extract them to the folder that we just selected. And this should, shouldn't take too long. So, so the next thing that we're gonna do once that is completed, it looks like it just completed. It looks like all the materials are there. And this is just a demonstration, but normally you you probably wanna have everything labeled correctly. Right now they're called material 10 and, and then and so on. So it's really, really hard to track it. But for this demo, I think we're okay. All right, now that we have the materials, we need to start with working with the light. So I'm gonna create a new light. And this one is gonna be a directional light. I'm just gonna put it right above the right above the car. And a couple of things that I wanna do in here is, is actually change the mode. So right now I have the mode set to real time. We're gonna select mix. And we're also gonna be enabling shadows. I'm just gonna enable shadows. The resolution that I'm gonna set is gonna be higher because I want those shadows to look a lot better. And I think everything else in here should be okay. Oh, let's also change the emission. 
So, and then the intensity of the of the light, it's going to be very high, but that's okay. It's going to be 500. And the reason for that is because we want to see the shadows. Let me let me go ahead and clear this error. Just going to clear that, and I'm going to just snap the console to a place where we can access it. Okay, so right now it's really hard to see, so that's what we're going to be working on next. Let's create a new, ga a new game object. It's going to be an empty one. This one is just going to be called post-processing volume, and we're going to create a volume. I'm also going to make it global. You can create multiple of these and layer them as well. That's what Unity did with the example project, but for this demo, I'm just going to do a global one. I'm also going to create a new profile. This is going to be a post-processing volume profile. And now that we do that, you're going to see that we get multiple options in here. So if I click on Add Overwrite, so one of the questions that I had initially when I started on this, I'm like, okay, where is the post-processing? I, I even downloaded the post-processing stack and I tried to make it work with HDRP, but the reason why it doesn't work is because Unity is integrating that into the HDRP pipeline, meaning that there is a post-processing option within the volume that you can now use. And this gives you a lot of different options that are similar to the post-processing one that you might be familiar with, but it's more granular. So they're they're breaking out a lot of the a lot of the options into multiple subcategories. So if you can't find one, that that might mean that it's already in you know it's its own component now. So now that I have that selected, let's go ahead and focus on on few things. So we need what's called a visual environment. And, and that's so that we can create a procedural sky and also the ambient mode. We can set it to either static or dynamic. So, and we also can tell it to use volumetric fog. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the type and in the type we're gonna say procedural sky. And now that we do that, you can see that now we're getting, it's really hard to see yet, but it'll, it'll look good in just a minute. So the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another override and I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna select the exposure this exposure we could change it here let's go ahead and search for exposure one more one more time we go ahead and go to post processing and i think this is the one that we need to we need to update as you can see that that is we can we can modify this there is another one that i used before and that's the one so let's go ahead and create the procedural sky and then we'll work on the exposure so i'm going to disable this and then on the procedural sky, you can tell it whether you want a sun or not. And I'm going to change some of these settings. Also go back to the lighting and we can set, I'm gonna change all of these settings on the sun highlight. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and go back here. And I'm gonna enable some of these other settings. The exposure, let's enable it so we can see, we can see what's happening. Okay, perfect. The ambient mode, I set it to static, and the fog, I'm gonna set it to volumetric. All right, and okay, excellent. Now we can change, we should be able to change the sky and also the ground. It looks like we're not getting, we're not getting any changes just yet. And let me see, I think that's too low. Uh, I think the, the emission was just way too high, which was killing everything. Let's see, let's do let's do 10 to start. Okay, and you can see what I wanted to see, I wanted to make sure that I was gonna see some shadows. So let me let me change the intensity to 100. The reason why I made it so high is because I I've been playing with this with a different set of 3D models and the, the settings were different. Okay, so we're starting to see some shadows. And you can kind of see if I change, let's see the bias that is changing how, I think that, I think that works. Okay, so the other thing that I don't see is the, the sun. So it's really hard to see. Let me see if I can change, there we go. So that, okay, so we can, the sun is just way, way too big. And I think that's because, let's go back to the directional light and let's see, change the this size. Okay. Still, we go back down on the intensity. Okay, that's what it is. The intensity is killing the size of the sun. Now if I go up, go back to post-processing, 
and I'm gonna go okay there we go okay so we can we can make some changes on the so you're gonna see that the procedural sky is really cool I can change the you know the size of the zone I can change the this other setting the conver convergence I can never say that word you can see that how that is changing also the atmosphere thickness we can change how the atmosphere looks and how it affects the model. Excellent. And kind of see how if I change this, let's go ahead and change the exposure to something like two. The thing that I don't want it to happen is that we don't see. Let me go ahead and move the light. Okay. The thing that I want to happen is I don't see the I want to make sure that we can see the shadows. And we'll, we'll play with some of the settings as well to make sure that that okay and the intensity there we go kind of see more of the shadows and I'm gonna change let's see where where is the sun see as I as I change the intensity all right let's go to let's go to post processing and. So right now we have a procedural sky, and like I was telling you about, you can change the, you can also change the the sky tint, which is getting killed by the the intensity. So let me change this back down, and we're gonna be going back and forth until I get the settings just right. And to be honest, this is you know this is normal. If we go through this process, there we go. So we can kind of change how the the sky tint looks. So I can go in and. Kind of like it, kind of like that works. And let's see, something like there we go, something like that. Okay, perfect. The exposure, you can also change exposure here. Looks like that is affecting that, it, that really looks cool. More of a lighter, lighter scene. The other thing that I want to do before we keep going is let's go ahead and, and, and place the camera correctly. Right now, what I want to see, I want the camera to be right about there. So I'm going to select my main camera, go to Game Object, and then select Align with View. And we're going to go here. There we go. And if we go back to the camera, I'm going to go to Set General. And let's change the, the field of view. I'm going to disable. See, it looks like I can't change the field of view because I'm using I'm using a physical camera. Looks like oh, there we go. It just took a minute to for the changes. Okay, excellent. So let's go back into post processing volume, and we looked at how we can change the procedural sky. So let me just show you some other settings. So we could also work on adding a little bit of vignetting. So if you wonder where the vignetting is for post processing. We can select vignetting. I can also either change the I can change the color, the center, the intensity of the vignetting. So we can see that if I do that, I can also change the smoothness. I like something like I, think I like something like that. The color I don't want it to be as dark. Now we can increment the there we go something like that. Let me make it a little bit darker. There we go. So that's how you can also make it rounded if you like to. Let's go ahead and look for other settings that I that I think I'm going to improve. So there's a lot of different things in here you can change. The one that I that I really enjoy was the Panini projection. So if I this is a new one that I didn't have. We we don't have the post processing stack for V2. So you can see that I can change. It's like augmenting the image. So we can we could do that, and we can also crop it if we wanted to. And I think if I do, I think I like that. Let's do 0.5. All right. Let's go ahead and go back here and let's go into post processing. So chromatic aberration is one that I use a lot as well, which I like. And you can see that that is giving us a really cool look behind. You can tell it how many samples I want. Let's go ahead and set that back to what it was. And you can see that how that is changing. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. One thing that I think we need in this, and, and I'm not worried about performance whatsoever in here. This is just so that you can see what's available. One thing that I want to do is I want to add the ambient occlusion because it's it's really 
I think it'll give it a lot more depth. So let's go ahead and add ambient occlusion. And I'm going to increment the intensity. You kind of see that just by doing that, it's really giving the car a lot of depth. So let's go back into game. And if I don't have any, it looks more cartoonish. So if I wanted to look more 3D, give it more depth, then you want to use, kind of see how I can change the thickness. And I think I'm okay with, I don't even think I need to do thickness. I think the intensity, the intensity was sufficient. But it depends on the look. If you want it to be, you know, more cartoonish, I think this works well for you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, and let's go back into the sky and see if I can get maybe a different color that will give this a better look. And I think I think if we go dark, let's go dark. And, and let me change the crown. I really like lighter now. Let's actually do light there on the ground and then let's look at the sky. And the sky can be... There we go. The other thing that we could do is we could look at... Because it would kind of cool if we have a view where... Let me rotate the car just a tiny bit. There we go, something like that. Then I'm going to change the view of the camera. Let's go back into the post processing and look at the, the sun size. There we go. It's kind of what I'm, I'm aiming for so that we can see the sun as well. Something like that. We So let's go ahead and click on the main camera and then game object, align with view. And we can now see the whole thing. Excellent. And see what happens if I change okay I like let's do that we go up a tiny bit go back into the post processing volume and let's change that size of the of the sun I think it's just too big there we go see it's, it's really easy for me to start getting into into this and never never ending because you know any change everything is procedural so as you start changing things you you know you might find the look that you're looking for I kind of like that to be honest okay excellent so now let me look at the light a little bit more I can play with the color intensity and okay <laughs> that, oh wow that looks really cool okay I think I'm gonna go with a high with a high number there, and if we change the temperature, so you're gonna see how that is changing. Also, the temperature, and I think I'm happy. Okay, so the shape is fine, but it's changing the reflection on the car. If I change the smoothness, so I think I'm good there. Okay, so I think I'm happy, happy with that, and exposure. Just change it just a tiny bit. There we go. All right. So I think I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of more settings. Let's go ahead and go back into post processing. So you can also change. You know, we can go into tone mapping. And one that I really like is the ACS. That gives it a really, really, really cool look. And if you notice, if I just do that and now I change it to AC, it really balances the you know the colors on the scene so that really makes it stand out and and to be honest I, I don't really see any more changes that we need to do on this I, I really like how that turned out so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it right here and then on the next video we'll, we'll work on looking at a couple more effects and seeing what else is available and how we can make this stand out a little bit more all right guys thank you very much for watching this video I really appreciate your time and if you have any questions please let me know also, be sure to check out GameDev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers. And also check me out in Patreon.com where I'm posting videos and also what's happening behind the scenes. I'm also posting early access to source code to those that are supporting me as a patron. So thank you very much, guys.